I will always confess that I have a tremendous bias when it comes to the Korean Lindy Hop community. I feel they have repeatedly demonstrated their love for learning the art with unparalleled technical accuracy. They are so good as a community on a technical level that their open level can blow away many of the highest level dancers in the world in terms of controlling the objective aspects of the technique. For those of you who have a hard time differentiating between what does objective and subjective Lindy Hop look like, you should check out the benefits of becoming a member of my Street Smart Swing community. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now today, we are gonna be taking a look at an open Strictly competition organized by Rhythm Korea. Big shout out to uh, Hyung Jung Lim for filming this. So let's take a look.
I've got to say that I am so impressed with the dancers in this competition. So many of them are duplicating many of the moves my peers and I have created. And I gotta be honest, they actually can execute them even better in some cases. One of my favorite sequences is when this couple does a syncopated mini dip. This is very much a, a sequence utilized by the Ninjammers dance team over the last decade. 
lots of rhythmic syncopations and intensity changes. It's just awesome. I also like seeing one of my original sequences that I performed during an improvised demonstration in Korea with my partner. We had such a great time and it's really cool to see that they like that. As a professional, it's kind of flattering to know that our original sequences matter enough for someone else to replicate. It's a real treat in today's society and we have this wonderful technology that allows us to just look up a video and see somebody else's body of work and learn it and master it and replicate it. And on the other hand, there's a piece of me that is just sad whenever I see other people's creations being demonstrated by other dancers. And I say this because I know our current society doesn't put pressure on people to give proper credit when it comes to dance. If you write a book, you make a script, or write a song, or you create a piece of visual art, everybody respects who made it. But if you create original dance moves, it seems like there is just social respect, but not enough respect to make people pay royalties for borrowing and performing other people's work. And unfortunately, if, if there is no proper credit being forced upon people, everyone will think that person made it up. Now, I understand the nature of people and I really don't mind if they do that. I really feel bad though for all of those original dancers who created the very template of jazz steps that we use today for swing dancing. I feel that they are either not properly being recognized as the creators of those moves, or even worse, have just been forgotten altogether. Many of the heroes that we like in swing dance continue to do other people's moves that are long gone, and if we're not informed, we can easily think our favorite swing dance heroes created those ideas. What's alarming is that most people don't even know that Shorty George is credit it for doing the first swing out. Most people also don't know that Maddie Purnell is the very first Lindy Hop follower. I'm not talking as if Lindy Hop is 400 years old like ballet and most people have moved way past the founders. I'm talking less than a century ago and we as a collective Lindy Hop culture have embarrassingly low percentages of people who even know who those two founders are. And what's worse, based on today's current Lindy Hop climate, I feel most dancers don't even care unless they they can finagle a way to use that dance history to try to legitimize whatever they want to do without giving any second thought to original context. Now, of course, many of us who have been around for a while know about Frankie Manning due to the abundance of his creative contribution to Lindy Hop, but even some of us forget his work was built on the foundation of other people like Shorty and Maddie. What's sad is Frankie has been dead since 2009 and most people know more about what's supposed to be offensive today in Lindy Hop, then I feel they know about Frankie's creative contribution to the art. And if we inadvertently ignore that legacy, we are bound to develop a self-centered perspective that drives us to do whatever we want to do to Lindy Hop on the backs of other people's hard work. I think there's always a healthy balance of replicating other people's moves, but I also think we need to be contributing to the art form just as much as those original dancers did. It's amazing how I can watch a video like this and and then go on a two minute tangent. I'm sorry guys, I can't help myself. What do you guys think? Should dancers be paid royalties like musicians for their art? Let me know in the comments section below. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to serve some of you in my class online. Take care.